Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation for a complex number z. So z is a complex number, needless to say, right? Because it's always complex numbers and we're going to try to find the value of z. That satisfies this equation. I'll be presenting two methods, even though two methods is not always possible. In this case it is and I just want to talk about it. So first method. This is a general method, so something that you can pretty much use for all problems of this type, replacing z with a plus bi. Remember, a plus bi is important, it's also the name of the channel, because z is a complex number and we can write it in standard form. Now how does this help? By replacing z with a plus bi, we can solve for a and b, which make up z, a is the real part, and remember from the lecture videos, B is the imaginary part, right? Okay, if you haven't seen the lecture videos yet and if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check them out. Now, we're going to replace Z with A plus BI everywhere, okay? So let's see how that goes. A plus BI plus A plus BI times I equals 2 plus 4I. Now let's go ahead and distribute A plus BI plus ai plus bi squared equals 2 plus 4i. Remember, i squared comes up a lot, and it's always equal to negative 1. That's one thing that you should never ever forget with complex numbers. It's a special number, and why are complex numbers important? Because we can solve equations that give us the square of a number being equal to negative 1, or any negative number for that purpose. That's not the only purpose of complex numbers. There's a lot of applications. Hopefully we'll talk about those later. Anyway, so this becomes a negative b. We get a minus b as the real part. And we can combine these two things into one and write it as a plus b times i. So now we have two complex numbers. And remember, if two complex numbers are equal to each other, so like if x plus yi is equal to z plus, I sh probably shouldn't use z because z is a complex number by itself. Let's just say t plus and i, and this implies x equals t and y equals n. Make sense? So that's how you can set two complex numbers equal to each other. Here, this means a minus b is 2, and a plus b is 4. So, nice. From a single equation, you get two equations. Bonus, right? In other words, this is a system of equations, which is very easy to solve, by the way linear, it's kind of like two lines that intersect at a single point. If you solve this system, add the two equations, A cancels, I mean B cancels out, 2A equals 6, and that means A is equal to 3, since their sum is 4, from here we get B equals 1. So we got the A and B values, and there's only one solution as an ordered pair A comma B, so this gives us a unique solution for our complex number z. But how do you find z from here? Remember, z was originally a plus bi, and since a and b values are known, we can write the z as 3 plus 1i, or just 3 plus i. So that's our complex number. You can definitely plug it in and check your work, which is not always necessary, but it's good practice. All right? So let's go ahead and do it. Z, 3 plus i, and then 3 plus i again, multiply by i. Let's do it. 3 plus i plus 3i plus i squared. i squared is negative 1. So these two give us a 2. These two give us a 4i, and you're all set. You see, checking is pretty easy, super fast. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. The second method obviously uses a different idea, and there's usually another way to do it, right? So I want you to note one thing here that z can be factored out. In other words, z is a common factor. Look at that. So we can factor z out. That gives us 1 plus i, just like normal factoring. And that equals 2 plus 4i. And this kind of looks like division, doesn't it? You multiply a complex number by another complex number, and the result is a complex number. To find one of the factors, you must use division. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 1 plus i. And of course, you can't directly divide, so what you need to do is use conjugates. 
So let's go ahead and rewrite it. And now we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus i. Remember, we talked about these in the lecture notes. When you multiply a complex number and its conjugate, so like z and z bar, their product is always a real number. And that is sum of two squares. Remember the a squared plus b squared? In other words, if you multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, you get a squared plus b squared. And not to get confused with our a and b here, you can also write it in terms of x and y. Anyways, from here, we get the product of these two things. I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to distribute. But the denominator is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2. Awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this. It's going to be fun. Now, you're going to use distributive property. Multiplying complex numbers is easy. Don't worry about it. Even if you're new to this, you just have to use the distributive property. And remember the fact that i squared is always negative 1. Okay? So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. 4i times 1 is 4i. And then finally, 4i times negative i is negative 4i squared divided by 2. Now remember, i squared is negative 1, so this becomes positive 4. 2 plus 4 is 6, so z becomes 6. And then these two give me plus 2i divided by 2. And if you divide the real part and the imaginary part by 2, you get 3 plus i. So z equals 3 plus i is a solution, and that's exactly the same solution that we found before. It's basically the same problem, so the answer should be the same, don't you think? Is there another way to do this? I doubt it, but you could always come up with a solution and let me know what you think. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and please let me know which method you like better. And bye-bye.